everyone, it's Karen here from tuppenscolor.co.uk. Thank you very much for joining me today. Uh, this is what I've been making. It's a uh, kite card. And if you'd like to see how I made it, then stay with me and I will show you. I've got a piece of Whisper White card, which is 10 inches by 4 inches. And I'm going to score it at 5 inches. But I'm gonna, And I'm also going to put a mark at 3 inches and at seven inches make sure I was absolutely on the mark I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to mark again at three inches and at seven inches and now I'm going to take my card and I'm going to line up the mark that I just made with this channel which I've gone into with a sharpie I'm not sure how well you can see it there but I have uh, coloured that with a sharpie so that it stands out so that I know that this channel goes all the way down so I'm going to put that little mark that I've just made onto the the channel and I'm going to swivel my card around until the mark on the opposite side so I'm going from edge to edge also lines up with the channel and I'm going to score and then I'm going to do the same for this mark and uh, that mark and I'm going to make sure that they're lined up in the channel and I'm going to score. Move my board out of the way. And now I'm going to um, now I'm going to burnish those folds that I've just made. So I'm going to go from there to there and to there. And there is the start of my cake card. Okay. So now um, I've got my pencil and I'm going to mark two inches from the edge. Here. So, so that line will be two inches and I am going to make sure everything is lined up nice and straight here because make sure that my my lines are burnished properly and that everything is sitting the way I want it to be because otherwise I will have a wonky card and I do not want a wonky card okay so I'm going to put the pencil mark that I just made in the channel and the corner of the card at the top here and I'm going to come in with my trimmer blade and I'm going to trim it and I'm going to go through a couple of times because I'm going through a couple of layers and this is a relatively new blade but you know I want to make sure it does a good job I'm going to go and do the same on the other side so again I'm going to put my pencil mark in the uh, in the channel and line up to my corner of my card there make sure that everything's lined up where I want it to be and chop there you go and there's the basis of my kite card I wanted to make a mat for the front of the card that was a little bit smaller all of the way round and to be honest I did struggle with it a bit tried trying to do it by measurement so this is the way I came up with doing it in the end I'm just going to talk you through it so what I did was I took another piece of card that was the same size as the front of my card in other words I just repeated the steps and I just cut out that part of it and then I got my ruler and um, I'm going to show you on this side. I've already done the other side. You can probably see. Uh, and what I did was I lined up the edge of the card against the one eighth of an inch mark on my ruler, which is not easy to see on this side. We'll do it that side. It's easier. And then when I had it straight. 
I just drew a line and I repeated that on all four sides and then I cut off the bits that I'd marked and again I did it on all four sides And that then gave me a template which I put on my uh, my Melon Mambo DSP from the uh, from the paper stack, and I cut that out. So that is now a reasonable fit for the front of my card. And believe me, I tried all sorts of ways of doing it by you know by measuring the card a bit smaller. And I, I went on to YouTube and I found all sorts of tutorials showing me how to do it. And whatever I did, it just came out looking at a funny angle. Um, so that is why I went with the, the template method. And if I keep that template nice and safe somewhere, um, as long as I make more cards that are this size, I can continue to reuse it and reuse it. So there is mount for the front of my kite card okay so a kite needs a tail and I've cut out a load of bows in um, melon mambo it's still melon mambo but it's a different pattern so it's a it's a dotty pattern and I've also cut some out in tempting turquoise which is also in the brights stack so I'm using the same DSP stack and I need one more Melon Mambo bow. So I have my bow maker punch and I'm going to chop out um, two pieces. I've got one either end so I'm making sure that everything's pointing in the right direction. Put that on one side. And I'm going to do this with a glue pen. You could use glue dots and put those pieces out of the way because I don't need them just now. So I have two bow pieces and that's going to be my centre. So I'm using my, uh, oh what's this called, two-way glue pen. And this is actually going to be retiring. But, you know, you use whatever glue. I mean Tombow would yeah totally work for this. You could use a glue dot. Um, you could probably use fuse or even snail. Um, I prefer a liquid glue for for these because you are going through you know a couple of layers and particularly when it gets to the last one I do want them to stick down well. And I think I've said before that although this um, this glue is retiring in the in the stamping up incarnation, it is still available from the people who actually manufactured it for stamping up. So if you, you really, really love it, um, and though I hate sending you outside stamping up to get your supplies, you, you can still get it. And I mean, it would be, it would be silly of me to, to just try and pretend that, you know, other manufacturers don't exist, because they totally do. All right, now, this, I am teasing you a little bit with this. This is Whisper White Thick Baker's Twine and I'm using it a little bit early um, because it's not just available just yet but it will be in the new 2016-2017 um, annual catalogue. So that means it is going to be around for a little while which is good news. So uh, where have my glue dots gone? There they are. Now the glue dots and I have a, um, have a bit of a I've described it as a turbulent relationship. It's, uh, you know, it can be a bit of a love-hate relationship with me and the glue dots. So I'm going to put a glue dot just there, and I'm just going to put the end of my uh, baker's twine in there. Okay, and I've got one of my bows. And I'm trying to decide whether that needs a tail as well. And I think maybe it might. Let's have a look. Because I've kept 
kept the tail pieces that I that I cut off. So let's have a look. So let's see how does that how does that look? Yeah, you know, I think I like that. Right, so I'm just gonna chop off the other end of this because it's getting in the way. Getting on my nerves. I use to stick it down. Uh, do you know what? I'll use the the two-way glue again, just to to put the tails down. One going over that way. of my cat now. Uh, I've cut three of the Bermuda Bay ribbons and two of the um, Melamamba ones and I'm just trying to decide how long I want the tail of this kite to be because I want to try and space things out quite evenly. quite long enough. So, same thing again. So I'm going to have the glue dot on the back of there. And let's pop that on the end of there. And this is popping up and it's really annoying me. So, I think maybe I'm going to have to put a Velcro dot or something in there to hold it uh, to hold it down but we'll, we'll worry about that a bit later on so there's my the first of my uh the first of my bows on my tail has gone on so now i'm going to put the others on i'm going to put the 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 tu tempting turquoise ones on first and so that i space so that i space them out nice and evenly do the melon mambo ones. I want to be extra picky I can turn the turn it over and on the back I can cover the back and yeah, do you know what I'll use Tombow for this I think I can just cover where that string is with a bit of the of the tail that I cut off the um, Oh, can't think today. It's the it's the the centre part the that goes round and holds the uh, holds the bow together. Now this isn't I suppose strictly essential, but it just does finish off. Um, it does finish off the back of the, the tail quite nicely and it does make it a little bit you know makes it a little bit more secure it means you know makes the um makes the bows a little less likely to fall off i'm just going to cut off that touch there and all we need to do now is to uh is to do 
and all we need to do now is to put some kind of sentiment onto the front of the card. I'm going to use this sentiment, they say it's your birthday, from Sweet Sayings. I've already got it mounted up on my block and I've got my Tempting Turquoise stamping pad and a scrap here of Whisper White and I'm going to ink up my stamp and I'm just going to pop that down and oh that's smudged I don't like that so I'm going to try it again fortunately we have magic two-sided paper and card here and I'm just going to take my time line it up and count one two three four five that's better as you can see that one it's that smudged a bit not good enough so now I've got my my big scissors, my big craft scissors, and I'm just going to kind of eyeball this. I'm going to go for a kind of a wibbly wobbly sort of rustic look with this. And, and I'm, yeah. And if you're not good at cutting straight, which to be honest I'm not, then the trick is to go wibbly wobbly on purpose. going to snip into the edge of there and I'm just gonna tab that so it's like a banner and I'm going to do the same thing on this side and tab that so that it's like a banner and there it is my lovely or oh, wibbly wobbly sentiment And as you can see, I found myself um, a little piece of sticking stick on Velcro and I put it in to hold that card closed because it was annoying me. So that is going to go onto the front of the card there. And I'm going to pop I've punched out some melon mambo and tempting turquoise card circles with the half an inch circle punch and the three quarters of an inch circle punch and I'm just going to add them on just to just to make things stand out a little bit. I got interrupted while I was filming that last segment so I just quickly want to talk through how I finished the card off and that was um, I mounted this banner up onto dimensionals and then I took the circles that I cut and glued together and I just arranged them uh, all around the banner and just, just slightly underneath because with the uh, with the banner being up on dimensionals there was room to tuck them around. So there it is finished and I hope that you've enjoyed this tutorial and if so then please do leave me a comment or give me a like and if you've loved what you've seen today then please do think about subscribing to my channel I will be posting more tutorials soon uh, if you want to know more about me then I do have a blog and a Facebook page and you can get there from the links in the more information box below and of course if you want to find out how to get hold of the supplies that I've used well you will find a link to my stamping up shop as well but just for now, thank you very much for watching and I hope that I'll see you again soon. Bye bye.